Hey everyone, Jeff Baker, ADU for you, standing in front of our 1906 Capitol Hill ADU. We converted this from an original carriage house. And as you can see, it uh, is a living unit now and has turned out to be quite a spectacular little project. So we got some interesting construction details. Even back in 1906, they were using construction science that they were definitely aware of, but uh, they did not call it construction science. If you look down here on the base, um, obviously we're in Capitol Hill. These were wealthy home owners that built these homes. And that's a green glazed brick. So they actually paint that like pottery and fire it. And that's a waterproofing technique that they use. So the house has it all around the foundation. This one did as well. But this facade was the original carriage house doors, so there was no brick wall across here. And when we demoed out this existing wall, we had to come up with a solution for waterproofing also to, meet, to match the aesthetics. Fortunately, we were able to salvage some of this uh, green glazed brick from the local brickyard. And uh, they, got, they had 90 of them, and I think it's about, we used about every single one of them on here. But because this is a wood framed wall behind this that goes right down to concrete, and this is at the same level as the floor inside, water is definitely a concern. So behind the sheathing here, obviously we've got the house wrap, but on the bottom, about two feet of it, we used a um, fast flash product. It's a Prosico uh, product that is uh, a rubber, rubberized, um, flashing. So that was painted all the way down. We actually taped the bottom seam along the concrete and then flashed over that with that liquid flashing. And uh, then you obviously got the metal flashing in here and the siding went on and everything has been completely sealed. We do have a nice air gap between this brick wall and the back wall just in case we do get or the interior wall in case we get water back there. But um, really a good match to the unit and uh, Really, really pleased with how that turned out. So now we're back into the backyard that comes in the side gate. This is a corner lot and coming off of 10th Street here is the entrance into the backyard, but it's also the entrance into the carriage house. This was the original entrance right here and actually original window opening. Over here, you can see where this existing, uh, where the added on garage was tied in. Some were probably very close to the time that this was built. Obviously, they still had the same brick material available, but we're thinking this, this structure is 1906, and I'm guessing somewhere within 10 years or so after that, this got added on for the Model T. This was a single bay garage added on. It had a door that went in right here, and it had double uh, barn door opening up into the alley side, completely not connected to this building. They actually bricked in the window that was on the exterior wall of the original carriage house, and uh, added this, this garage bay onto it. So original door opening, the original door opening to the garage here got closed in uh, and turned into a window that's now the bedroom. And um, really just uh, the brick is in good shape. We tuck pointed the whole building um, and did a really nice paint job over many, 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 many years of paint. Um, the original number actually, we are, when we were out front, I didn't mention that, but the original number on the house uh, was 1302 and that's the, 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 the existing number now. And when we pulled those numbers off, it was all the way down to the original wood. So this, this unit had a number, an address number on it from the beginning and little things like gas meter, the mailbox, this was definitely a, a habitable space. Um, but when we went to go permit, uh, the city did not see it as that. All right, well, let's uh, head on in. Welcome into this quaint, cozy little unit that we created here. We're at about 520 square feet overall for the entire building. Um, and as you're seeing up there, we went ahead and took off the original ceiling that was right where the hip roof came down onto the top plate. So where the angle meets the wall, the angle of the roof meets the wall is where the ceiling was. We pulled that ceiling off. And we, we thought about that originally in design to open up the space and vault all the way up. Structural engineer did call for the Portland ties to be added um, for structure. And um, we ended up just kind of fancying those up a little bit. 
throw in uh, some copper to cover the brackets that were over the roof rafters and painting, painting the ties uh, black. But we intentionally left those exposed like that. I think it's kind of a cool feature. So really nice kitchen, a full size appliances in here, dishwashers in the island, very nice uh, refrigerator and range and everything you, you got, lots of cabinet space for somebody that would be living here, a couple or uh, a single, single, single person would probably do best. All right, so we're back at the little entrance foyer here, and this is just a little storage closet and where we ended up tucking the uh, hot water heater, uh, tankless, which is nice space saving efficiency. And then we got our bedroom right off to the right of the entrance door. Nice cozy little space in here. Big beautiful window. And I tell you, the afternoon light coming in, dappled light that's coming through the uh, tree that's above, there's a big cherry tree outside, is just really nice in the afternoon. We've got a pretty much full size walk-in closet. It's not your typical. It's just a rod and a shelf, but it is large enough to get in and uh, got some extra storage shelves back in here as well. And then the bathroom, this is a full bathroom. Turned out really, really nice. Super cool wallpaper too. And you have full, full stacked washer and dryer in here as well. So this is a efficient, small space. Uh, beautiful finishes, I think fairly timeless. The white subway tile. A nice chair rail along, along the edge there. And I did a custom barn door. So that's a salvaged old wood door that we just converted over. So when we were in the demo phase, um, we hadn't really planned on how we were gonna frame this bathroom enclosure in the closet here. And we decided not to go all the way up to the ceiling, which made it feel much more open. Also, the original plans were for this brick wall that was between the two, because if you remember, like I said before, this, this building was the original structure for horse and carriage. And then some family, or maybe the original family that lived in the house, was tired of horse and carriage and went and purchased a Ford and added a separate structure on. So we needed to cut three holes into the brick wall in order to get the doors in. The door into the bathroom, or excuse me, the bedroom, the door that goes into the bathroom and then the door that goes into the, the laundry bay. And when we got that opened up, uh, the brick was in a little bit of disrepair, needed, needed some work. We decided to just take the whole brick wall down and to reframe it. And when we did that, that brought us all the way up to the uh, top plate there that opened up some nice light area. And I thought it would be a crime to close in that with uh, wall space. So I contacted the homeowners and said, hey, what do you think about putting a window in here? Well, a regular window wouldn't be ideal. That's underneath an eave. It's also right on top of that flat roof that is the old garage, now the current bedroom. And if, if we put a regular window in there, you're gonna have a lot of splatter and leaf build up and all kinds of stuff that would not look good from the inside and nobody's gonna get up there and clean that on a regular basis. So we decided to opt for that glass block uh, which is somewhat structural as well and added some nice light. That's a southern facing. So in the afternoon, you get some, some extra light coming in through there. So pretty cool feature. So one of the challenging things was getting the structure permitted. Even though it had been a living unit uh, as uh, evidenced by the address that was on the, the building, which was just a mail address. It wasn't officially with the city the gas meter and the fact that when we came in and you can see in the, pre, um, the previous photos before we did the demo where the existing bathroom and kitchen was and there was a little gas heater in here. So this had been an apartment. It had 1950s flooring in it. So the last time it had been renovated was in the 1950s. Uh, the city saw it differently. In 1957, we discovered a zoning document that um, an inspector had come out and on the zoning document, on this inspection sheet, it had a box that said other structures on property and he wrote apartment house in there. 
So we had that from 1957. So we felt like that was a good argument saying this has been an apartment house at least since 1957 and the city recognized it as that then. Well, the city goes by last known use. 1976, a homeowner pulled a permit to turn the main house into eight apartments, which happened to a lot of these larger homes in Capitol Hill. And he never turned it over completely into eight apartments, but in order to get that permit, he had to have three off-street parking spaces. So he called this building the three-car garage. That was in 1976. So according to the assessor's office, this is a three-car garage. According to the city, the last known use was a garage. So in order to convert this to a habitable space, that's a complete different um, set of requirements rather than just rehabbing or um, renovating an existing habitable space. So it went from a non-habitable to a habitable. So energy code is uh, one of the, th the things that's challenging on these old buildings. There was other contractors that looked at this project prior to us and said, we gotta take this building down because they knew what type of challenge they were up against to get it up to code. But there are things that you can do. There's materials out there that you can use. We discussed some of those newer construction materials that we use on the front uh, wall. And then underneath here, we used a product from Halo called Intera. It's a two inch uh, foam, rigid foam. And we put that, and it's actually really, this floor is really pretty soft because this is a slab, the original slab that's in here, but in order to meet that uh, performance method of energy compliance, which takes the whole building envelope into account rather than a prescriptive approach, which just, use, which just builds it to the code. Um, when you can't build it to the code because it's an existing structure, then you take the overall building envelope and we used an energy consultant to run their numbers and figure out where we needed to put insulation. So the whole building is spray foamed and then we've got R10 on the floors as well and those are all, all taped, sealed um, underneath here to also help with air sealing and to help us beat our blower door, which we did. Uh, did pass on, of course, to get a certificate of occupancy. But that was a really nice feature. The unit is very comfortable. We only are using mini splits, and we've got one head in the main unit and one or in the living area and one head in the bedroom. And it's very comfortable in here, and it doesn't actually get too hot or cold because we were working on this when it was cold out still, and we had no heat in here, and it was um, holding its temperature fairly well. So. Very, very comfortable space. Um, pretty quiet as well with all the foam over the brick walls um, and the extra furring that we did. We furred out with two by fours to get an extra cavity to get the, the spray foam into. Um, but yeah, turned out as a really cozy, comfy unit. So we were out in the alley, but there's a little construction going on. So we're gonna talk about um, that side, that was where the original barn doors were, right over that fence. And you can see there's the mini split condenser unit back there, which was a great location to put it out of the way and out of sight. But uh, that brick wall was the two wood uh, barn doors. And the brick that you see there came out of the uh, demo, demoed wall that we demoed between the two buildings when we opened up the inside. So that actually was very convenient. We didn't have to go source more bricks to match from the brickyard. We actually just got them from the inside of the building and moved them outside. But uh, yeah, that was just kind of showing where that a little additional structure was added on. And what you were looking at there was the back of the closet um, and the bedroom space. Mm -hmm.